Marvel Comics had a ton of announcements last weekend at New York Comic Con, and quite frankly, it kind of broke me, especially the Women of Marvel panel for Marvel Comics, which delivered more of the same mantle swaps of plenty, creators getting third and fourth chances after they failed. We also got Vidiala's leftovers on this panel, as well as Marvel Comics going out of their way, it seems, to hire the worst writers in the world that DC Comics has to offer. Now they're coming over to Marvel. Like I said, it kind of broke me. I'm sure many of you noticed. I ended up taking like two or three days off because once I saw all these announcements, I knew I was going to have to cover it. And quite frankly, it was quite depressing. <laughs> I just had to take a couple of days off. I had to take some me time and just goof off for a few days before I could get back to the task at hand. But I cannot be broken. I can only be delayed. We're going to talk about the Women of Marvel panel and all the announcements that came out that are absolutely destroying the comic book industry. A couple of things of note that I'm not going to cover in depth. They did talk about a Women of Marvel one-shot. I'm sure that'll be a Marvel Voices issue. They also have a Women of Marvel podcast, and we're trying to hype that up. I doubt many people are actually listening to that, but whatever. It's out there if you want to go check it out and see some of these fantastic Women of Marvel that are destroying characters left and right. And we did have the usual suspects. We had Titty Howard. Stephanie Phillips, now with Marvel Comics, Danny Lore, and Erica Schultz, a name you probably don't know, but there's a good chance Marvel just sabotaged her career and any chance she ever had of getting over with readers by lumping her in with these terrible comic book writers. Let's talk about the T.D. Howard book first. Betsy Braddock, Captain Britain, is written by T.D. Howard with art by Vasco Gorgiev. The limited series launches in February 2023. Fake Captain Britain tries to sort out a place for herself and her brother Brian Braddock, her predecessor is Captain Britain and the current Captain Avalon, with Britain seemingly actively rejecting the presence of a mutant in the role of its ancestral protector. Betsy Braddock with writer Tinny Howard. Once again, she's literally been trying to get over Betsy Braddock as the new Captain Britain for like two and a half years now, and it's been soundly rejected every single time they try to do this. The sales on Excalibur featuring this story from Tinny Howard absolutely died. They had to reboot the book. They decided to call it Knights of X, continue the story, and two issues in, they canceled it again in all seriousness. How many times can Marvel Comics under C.B. Cebulski and the X-Men line under Jordan White give Tinny Howard chances at this character to get the story over and make people care about Betsy Braddock as Captain Britt? No one has accepted the story. No one likes to mantle swap, and they really dislike Tinny Howard's comic book writing. And that's not surprising because she's not a superhero comic book writer. She's talked about this herself. When she thinks about the X-Men and how she wants to write them, she thinks about LARPing. She thinks about Dungeons and Dragons. She doesn't think about superheroes and what would make a compelling superhero story. So we get more drivel from Tinny Howard and Marvel Comics under the X-Men banner, which has absolutely been diluted and bastardized over the last few years. Tinny Howard being one of the main culprits, all under the watchful eye of Jordan White, the terrible and I do mean absolutely terrible group editor for the X-Men comic book series. I do feel bad for Vasco Gorgiev, the artist on the book. It's all going to be wasted on this terrible story that is going on its third year of absolute failure under the Marvel Comics banner. But it actually got worse. Gambit and Rogue are reunited in a five-issue limited series titled Rogue and Gambit from Stephanie Phillips and Carlos Gomez. The series focuses on the aftermath of Gambit's time in Otherworld in which he died and was resurrected, but only after a quest to find the mainstream Marvel Universe Gambit in the multiverse, as mutants who die in Otherworld and are resurrected often come back with drastic changes to their personalities. The funniest thing about this announcement in particular, even Newsarama gets Stephanie Phillips and Tinny Howard confused. This article has been up for like four days now, and it still says Tinny Howard is writing Gambit and Rogue, even though it's Stephanie Phillips, and nobody has told him you got the wrong name in there because everyone realizes that Stephanie Phillips and Tinny Howard are essentially the same comic book writer. What has Stephanie Phillips ever done to actually warrant an opportunity on an X-Men comic book? Everything that she's done at DC Comics has absolutely failed spectacularly, especially the stuff that she's done with Harley Quinn. It is un-fucking readable. That's the best way that I can put it. The only thing that Stephanie Phillips has done better than Tinny Howard and Danny Lore and the other writer that we're going to talk about here is she actually does have a comic book series that sells. It's called Grimm. It's from Boom Studios. And shockingly, it's not a superhero comic book because she's not a superhero comic book writer. So when you create a project that plays into her strengths and the things that she actually wants to write about, not surprisingly, people are actually interested in it and it actually sells pretty well. And from what I hear, the comic book's pretty good at this point. But me personally, I'm so jaded by Stephanie Phillips and all the crap that she's done at DC Comics, now moving over to Marvel Comics, I won't even give her a chance anymore. I've been told Grimm is good. I don't care. I've read enough bad Stephanie Phillips comic books at this point that I'm actually taking it personally. 
I don't care if you tell me Grimm's good because Harley Quinn was so bad, it's undeniable. That sensational Wonder Woman project or whatever it was she wrote was fucking atrocious. She has one project that's actually worked and got over with readers and Marvel Comics hires her not to do anything like that, but to go and do more superhero stories so she can fail some more. I have no idea why DC and Marvel won't listen to their fans and realize that Tini Howard and Stephanie Phillips are both failures. They've had so many opportunities, way more than they should have had at this point, and they failed every single time at the big two writing superhero comics. It's time to move on and try and find a new talent that maybe people actually want to read. One of those may be Erica Schultz. Laura Kinney is getting her own limited series in 2023 titled X-23 Deadly Regenesis. The five-issue limited series starts in March and is written by Erica Schultz. The story is likely to deal with aspects of Laura Kinney X-23's past as a genetically engineered mutant assassin with the healing factor heightened senses and adamantium claws of the original Wolverine. I will give Marvel Comics and Jordan White this. At least they're not trying to call Laura Kinney X-23 Wolverine anymore. I'm tired of the mantle swaps. Obviously, this is another mantle swap character in the Marvel Comics universe. Hopefully, they're starting to move her away from that Wolverine persona because there's only one Wolverine in the Marvel Comics universe anyone cares about, and it ain't X-23. And I do feel bad for Erica Schultz. This is really her first big break. She got to write a Daredevil annual a few years ago. Other than that, I think most of her comic book work has actually been with Mad Cave and some of the other smaller publishers out there. But lumping her in with this group during this announcement kind of gives people a bad impression about what Erica Schultz is as a writer. Whether it's fair or not, I associate her with Tinny Howard, Stephanie Phillips, and Danny Lore now. And that ain't exactly good company to keep if you actually want to sell comic book stories. Now, I do know in the past that she did get a break with DC Comics. I think she was part of their first class that Scott Snyder taught that was like the up-and-coming writers for DC Comics. I think Bill Kennedy Johnson was in there, Mags Visaggio some other people like that. So she at least has had some good mentorship from an actual superhero comic book writer. Whether or not that turns out to be anything good, I'm not really sure. But announcing this series along with the Betsy Braddock book and the Gambit and Rogue book probably puts a damper on most people's expectations. And I think a lot of people won't check this out just because it came out in this panel. I know that's kind of how I feel about it. The last book we'll talk about is from Beat Ayala Light, her protege of sorts, Danny Lore. Blade the Vampire Hunter's Daughter Bloodline is getting her own five-issue limited series starting in February 2023. Written by Danny Lore, Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, focuses on young Brielle Brooks as she tries to adjust to life at school while also developing vampiric powers and learning the truth about the identity of her father, the Daywalker known as Blade. This was actually originally announced, I think, in 2017. Maybe it was 2015. It was supposed to be written by Tim Seeley, and this was back when he was actually a thing in comic books. But there was a campaign orchestrated by Comics Alliance, a now defunct website, that essentially got him removed from the book and killed any chance for this character to actually make it to Marvel Comics for several years. She's finally here, and apparently Vita Ayala just was too busy to write the book. So now it's a Danny Lore character. Blade's daughter already made her first appearance, I believe, on Free Comic Book Day. And let's just put it this way. I read the story, I talked about it here on the channel, and it was absolutely awful. It was pretty much unreadable, which is basically every single comic book written by Danny Lore. If you want proof, go read Multiversity Teen Justice. That thing is absolute dog shit. If you want to see a bunch of lesbians arguing for 24 pages, masquerading itself as a superhero comic book, that is absolutely the series for you. Unfortunately, I don't think it's the series for most superhero comic book readers, at least serious ones at this point, but this was just awful. It featured everything you hate about modern comic books. Mantle swaps everywhere. Failed creators getting so many chances it's not even funny. Vita Ayala's leftovers showing up once again. And Marvel Comics unintentionally ruining the reputation of a comic book writer before she ever even gets her first big break. I mentioned Comics Alliance earlier. A lot of people were probably wondering, Wes, how did we get here? This seems like an odd place. We weren't close to here even 10 years ago, even five years ago. Comics Alliance is essentially patient zero when it comes to the destruction of the comic book industry itself. There are a lot of people that work there. They are now in the comic book industry and they are destroying the characters and universes that you and I love left and right. It's been an orchestrated campaign. If you're unaware of what I'm talking about and where this all started and what Comics Alliance has done in comic books, you need to check out this video. This is an older video. The audio is not great. The visuals aren't great. But the information is absolutely spot on, and you will learn the names of a lot of people killing modern-day comics. Definitely check this one out if you don't see it here. There's also a link in the video description.